December 1958. The last gaps were closing in the wall of the world's mightiest dam, and the flowing power of the great Zambezi River was stemmed forever. As Kariba continues to take on its final shape, it's hard to believe that the unruly Zambezi would ever come to this. Yet though the main drama is over, Kariba has lost none of its fascination, and future tourists who drive over the highway along the dam wall will still marvel at this mighty man-made miracle. One is reminded of an anthill of gigantic proportions, and even the minor details are major undertakings. For instance, thousands of tons of concrete are going into the high-level spillways to carry the overflow when it becomes necessary. With the dam as a central point, everything radiates outwards. The Kariba Lake is spreading and growing, and a network of pylons are linking Kariba to the rest of the Federation. The conductors which will carry the power are being prepared and erected, the ends crimped to form a joint with the insulators. Insulators themselves are large and heavy and have to be manhandled to hoist them up to the pylons. A further example of massive minor details. High above ground level, sure-footed riggers are working on the pylons, concentrating on the job in hand and disregarding danger. It's certainly no occupation for the squeamish. This is not my idea of travelling by air, but the men think nothing of it as they ride the conductors to complete connections. It shows what men can become accustomed to when it's necessary, and in this case there's no alternative. It's just part of the job and is accepted as such. As the network of pylons and conductors is erected, switching stations are being built to distribute the current which will be generated. There's the same urgency here as there is in completing the dam. This is the Leopards Hill substation near Lusaka, where the power will be stepped down from 330 to 88 kVs. Thick oil-cooled insulated cables are being cut to form part of the grid system. With so much public attention centered on the building of the dam, the layman has tended to overlook such ancillary works. But the Kariba project must be viewed as a whole to appreciate its true and colossal magnitude. We must look at the web and not merely the spider. We must consider not only the source of so much power, but how it will reach the entire Federation. Then, and only then, does Kariba assume its full magnificent significance. Progress at Kariba has reached the stage where the conductors, which will carry power from the generators on the south bank to the north, are being stretched across the gorge. A thin wire is winched across, attached to the aluminium covered conductors. Six such conductors will carry the power in three phases, each of 330,000 volts. It's a tricky operation, guided entirely by telephone. On the dam wall itself, the main activity centers on the construction of the road and footpaths which will run along the top. Our old friend, the Blondin platform, is still doing human service, transporting thousands of tons of concrete and dumping it into position. As each load is dumped, the vibrators are used to drive out the air and consolidate it. In addition to the road and footpaths, provision is being made to house the huge spillway gates which will control the flow at flood levels. In this section, the time factor is not so vital, for the lake will take some years to fill. Nambezi has subsided, and engineers at Kariba are now concerned with emptying the copper dam to save it. Although the crisis is over, the river is still extremely high, and the greatest efforts will be called for to complete the while in picturesque cascades, the flow passes Kariba, and the tormented furies of a mighty river are things of the past.